This is an example of a photovoltaic module made from crystalline silicon solar cells. It has an aluminum frame, in this case black, although often um, shiny colored. And this module has 72 solar cells in series. This particular module is a Sanyo 210N module. 210 means that it's 210 watts. That's the rated output power under standard test conditions. And it's using the Sanyo HIT technology, which means that on top of the crystalline silicon wafer, they've deposited a thin layer of amorphous silicon. That thin layer gives the solar cell a higher voltage and also reduces its temperature coefficient. However, that does not make this into an amorphous silicon or a thin film module. In almost all other characteristics, it's the same as any other crystalline silicon solar cell photovoltaic module. The um, 72 solar cells in this module are wired in series, top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom, all around the module. There are um, bypass diodes. I believe that this module has three bypass diodes, one for each pair of two columns of solar cells. You should also notice these white diamonds between the solar cells. That's because these solar cells were grown from silicon wafers, which were cut from a thick circular column of silicon. And when they cut them, they didn't want to cut them so small that they would have perfectly square modules. Instead, they cut them and they, had to, they didn't have any silicon for these little areas over here. They cut them into octagons, but they didn't want to waste enough silicon to make them perfect squares. That left them with these diamonds, which are an easy way to recognize a solar module made from single crystal silicon solar cells. Modules that are made from polysilicon solar cells typically do not have these diamonds. That's because either they're grown from larger, less expensive columns of silicon, so they don't mind wasting the extra silicon to make perfectly square solar cells, or because they're grown by some other technique that grows square solar cells wafers directly. So, this is very common for crystalline silicon solar cells. Of course, this represents a little bit of lost space in terms of generating electricity from sunlight. You don't generate any electricity in these white diamonds. Let's look at the back of the module. This is the junction box, which has the bypass diodes and the wires that you use to connect the module to other modules in your system and eventually to an inverter. It has a plus and a minus that can be wired to get, can be connected together like this, which makes it easy to connect each module to the next and avoids the problem of, of accidentally connecting mo uh, a module backwards. The lengths of the wires differ from one module to the other, and usually you can find that on the spec sheet. Modules also have a label on the back that shows some of the electrical characteristics of the module. That is required by the National Electric Code. We see the uh, rated power. Typically, these numbers are slightly different from the numbers that you find on the spec sheet. And the reason for that is that these are the actual measured values for each module. And if you get a batch of modules, often there will be slightly different values here. We also notice on the back uh, points for grounding. When you put these modules on a rooftop or on some other mounting, you need to connect the aluminum frames to ground. And these are points where you can connect to the aluminum underneath. You can't simply connect something to the surface of, of the aluminum frame because it's anodized, meaning that there is um, a resistive layer uh, on, on the top of the um, aluminum frame. So you have to be able to connect into the bulk of the aluminum frame through one of these uh, grounding points. There's, there's two here, top and bottom, and there may be a few others. Um, there are two I see at the bottom. And then these holes here are not grounding points. These are simply if you wish to use them for mounting the solar module.